Hey YouTube, um, this is our ongoing preparedness video series. Today we're going to talk about uh, learning how to suture. And uh, you know, you might have stocked up on hydrogen peroxide, alcohol wipes, uh, rubbing alcohol, a lot of those cleaning types of things. But um, And you also might have an IFAC kit to uh, stop bleeding. But... What about all the small stuff where your say your kid gets a gets a nail in their foot or in their hand or you get a splinter that gets infected in uh shit hits the fan scenarios you don't want to die from an infection on a basic wound um, if you've read the book one second after then you know about the main character who his hand gets infected just by innocently helping people and he's got a small cut and uh nearly dies so i think it's important for us to um think about the things that you're not going to have like uh, access to nurses and hospitals and emts and so you better know how to uh clean a wound stitch a wound and um this isn't going to make you an expert, but it's better than not knowing what to do at all. So today uh, I'm going to go over this suture practice kit that I've got from Amazon. I'll have all the links to all the items in the uh, description. It comes with um, scissors and forceps, needle driver, um, I've thrown in a couple extra things here too. It's got some practice suture material here. This is not for, uh, you know, general use. This is just a practice kit. So you probably don't want to use this in real life, but, uh, this is a cheap product that'll allow you to practice. And then you can get a real kit later to use in emergencies. So I've already done a couple of practice stitches. Um, you know, all the stuff's on YouTube that teaches you how to do it. And actual doctors, surgeons that uh, can teach you how to do it. Um, there's a lot of different types of stitches that you can do, but the basic one here is uh, just the interrupted stitch, which to me in an emergency situation is gonna be good enough. Um, the kit comes with the uh, silk braided style of suture um, as you can see it comes with this little needle on the end for those of you who are not medical uh, profession types which is me i have never done this before but uh, between youtube and this kit um, i'll at least be able to close up a wound and i, I think the big thing the big takeaway from this is if you're not planning on redoing the wound, reclosing or opening it up and then cleaning it, closing it again, like you would say if you were out in the woods uh, and then came back to civilization, you better make sure everything's sterile. Um, because what's the good in closing up a wound with, you know, non-sterile stuff? So with that being said, um, if you're in the field, like you say you're hunting or something and you know, you have to stitch something up. More than likely, you're just going to wrap it till you get home. Um, another good backup, if you don't have a stapler with you, you know, I mean, it, it is possible to use safety pins. I don't recommend it, but if you're out there and this is all you've got, um, this is similar to uh, a staple. And these wounds aren't very good examples of how you would, get by with a safety pin because they're not very big wounds um, but as you can see rather than having a you know a suture type staple device you can use a safety pin in a pinch so if you have nothing else but you've got these it's a little hard to deal with but uh, you can actually close up a wound somewhat you know, like that. That's not what I'm getting at today. Another thing you want to stock up on is Neosporin and, like I said, the alcohol and the uh, 
hydrogen peroxide. Um, one thing I learned, the uh, silk braided versus the nylon monofilament. I prefer the silk braided. To me, it's easier to work with and get a hold of. Um, I guess it's probably personal preference. I've had stitches a lot and uh, I've seen both used, but uh, I prefer working with the, uh, the silk. So again, this is the first time I've ever done this, the first day I've ever done this, and uh, just by watching a surgeon on YouTube, I think his name was Buck, last name was Buck, anyway, um, I was able to, to make a couple of stitches pretty decently, so just looking at this here, I'll just do it real quick and dirty, of course you're not touching everything like I am here, you want to use the... Uh, the needle driver and the uh, forceps, the hemostat, scissors without touching. And of course you've cleaned the wound already, but I'm just gonna rip through here real quick, so to speak. And you can critique, but like I said, I'm not a professional. But you can see how simple it is with the right tools to do a real quick type of a stitch. And I did notice that this practice kit, uh, the needle driver did wear down a little bit so it doesn't grab the, uh, the uh, suture very well after a few uses, but you just wrap it around the end there and grab the end of the suture, pull it over the end, tighten it up, and I could have wrapped it another time, it looks like. But this is why we do the practice. It's not quite tight enough, so I'd probably go ahead and do another wrap. There. Eh, not too bad for a dummy. Not a nurse, not a doctor, but, um, Anyway, that's just one stitch. And uh, as you can see, I did a few others here that turned out okay. I mean, it's gonna close it up, but... Uh, all right, so now thinking outside the box again. Um, you might not just have a cut you're dealing with, you might have actually an embedded object here. I've got a little brad nail. Could be a fishing hook, whatever. Um, the thing is that you may not be able to get the object out without cutting it out. So you could practice with this kit. And here I'm just gonna insert the nail into this um, simulated skin. Because it might be embedded, it could be a bullet, who knows what. Anyway, we get to use our uh, scalpel. And again, I have to get used to not touching. So we clean the area. And you're, you're gonna see an entry when, of course, this isn't exact, but um, there's probably gonna be the head of the nail here or whatever, you'll see it. If you can figure out the orientation, if you just use this, this stuff is a lot like human skin as far as cutting. Just slice along. And use the tools to take a peek that's what I like about the practice kit. You can actually do this a little bit before you actually have some sort of an incident. And once it's opened up enough, I don't know if you can see it there. It's kind of hard with this stand on my phone. You can uh, pluck it out of there with the hemostat. 
And then of course you have to suture uh, the wound. Of course I'm using my fingers again. This is why surgeons get the big bucks. It takes a lot of patience. So here we've got our wound from removing the object and we're just gonna stick it in there. Oh, went a little too far. That's one thing I noticed, it was easy to go too far, too wide. You really have to rotate your hand to make it work right. Go. Oh, now I got a mess. Okay. And then we're going to do our little wrap up. Practice. Maybe I'll wrap it three times this time. Last time it didn't tighten up right. So there we got it. Slip it down. Oh, oops. Dang it. Yeah, needle driver's getting pretty loose here. It's already worn because it's not medical grade. Oh, did it again. <laughs> kind of cheating here. There. As you can see, it's not easy. But... Like I said, that's why the surgeons and the nurses get so much training and practice over and over again. In closing, um, I do need subscribers. The only way that I get support on the channel is if you subscribe and um, also use the product links in the descriptions if this helps you out. Um, I've got a full length or, or length of uh, products listed on my webpage www.prepperlife.net or these products also are listed on the uh, description in YouTube. Thanks for watching.